Hey guys, I'm Jim, KN4YCD, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I want to talk about some really cool software that I found the other day and I purchased myself personally. This is called SDR Control, and it is available for Mac OS and for the iPad. It is not available for PC or Android or Linux. Uh, full disclosure up front on that. The software is designed to control the ICOM 7610 the ICOM 9700, and the ICOM 705. This software connects over the network to, uh, to drive these radios. Um, and we're going to dive into the software and take a look at it here in just a second. The software is designed by Marcus Roskosh, and I, I hope I said that right, call sign Delta Lima 8 Mike Romeo Echo. Marcus has developed this software and it's currently on version 2.04 it's apparently been out for several months i just discovered this the other day um, i was talking to a friend of mine and he mentioned that he'd seen it and asked if i had i have a 7610 so this is one of the three radios this software will work with i currently use uh, ham radio deluxe which i bought not long after i got my first radio which was an ic7300 and I've since sold the 7300 and moved to the 7610. Um, this software is pretty unique in that, obviously, it's a small set of radios it works with. Uh, secondly, it is only iOS or Mac. It is not iPhone. It is iPad. Um, and then the way that it controls these three radios. These three radios are specific in that they have a network connection built into them. In the case of the 7610 and the 9700, those are wired Ethernet connections. In the case of the 705, it has a Wi-Fi connection available. So that is how the SDR Control app manages the radios. Now, it will act as a CAT server, so you could use it with other software and point that software at the SDR Control application ports that gets way beyond the scope of what I wanted to do in this video. So uh, let's jump into the software and take a look at it and go through. <clears throat> okay, so I've got the application up here. And as I said in the intro, the app is designed to work with three radios, the IC7610, 9700 or the 705. I have a 7610, so that's what we're connected to. And you can add multiple radios into the app. I only have the one radio, so that's all that I have connected. And as you can see, we're going to jump to the cool stuff right here off the bat. I have FT8 going. And this app has built in FT8. Um, no WSJTX required. And there's nothing wrong with that app. This is just built into this one. So I have rig control, FT8, FT4, PSK, RIDI, CW, some level of functionality for all those modes built into this application, which also does the rig control. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've got FT8 up here, and, and it works very similar to WSJTX. I can double-click an icon and um, get to it. I want to make sure that I'm muted though because i don't want the sound coming out while i'm trying to talk so <clears throat> let's mute it there bring back ft8 i'm gonna put that up in the corner so this works pretty much like you'd expect ft8 to work it's not significantly different um the interface i feel is a little a little cleaner um generally but other than that it, it works pretty much the same the um I can set my transmit and receive offsets here. This being red indicates I'm transmitting. This indicates that I'm transmitting on the even ticks and not the odd ticks. Um, of course, I can generate my own CQs and start from there. This also logs, and I'll show you all that in a second. Change the bands, so on and so forth. I can turn on filters. I have, um, I think I have a filter on at the moment. One of the neatest features of the FT8 app built within this is this fabulous globe. So there is a map of all my FT8 contacts or all the stations I'm seeing, I guess, at the moment. 
Um, I can change this to a surface map like that, or you can use the globe uh, functionality either way. And of course you can um, drag this and move it around and, and see where everything's going and, and fill up the screen and, you know, make it bigger, so on and so forth. So that's really cool. That is built into the FT8 or yeah, the FT8 part of this program. Super sweet. The other thing that I think is interesting and neat is that if you look down here on the um, on the waterfall, we have signals marked with the call sign of the uh, transmitter for those signals. So that's pretty swank. And uh, it does that automatically if you have the functions turned on. And you can turn that off. If it aggravates you, just turn it off. I don't know that it's super useful yet but it's an interesting way to do it um you can also come down here and right click in this field and zoom in and zoom out on the frequency band you're looking at i can come over here and move the band so on and so forth if i, if I wanted to i can also right click and set my receive or transmit ft8 frequency so that's pretty neat um let me kill FT8. Oh, I got a contact happening. Um, something else that's cool about this: when you make a contact, it will it will beep um, when it starts connecting and actually is, is in the middle of a QSO. So if you're sitting there trying to make a contact, it'll let you know that it's it's contacted someone and go from there. Okay, I'm I'm going to stop this because we got we got stuff to do here. Let me close that. Sorry, dude, whoever you are. So that's FT8. Um, here is the controls are very similar to any rig control software in the way they're laid out. I think my only complaint about this program is that it doesn't look like an ICOM 7610 panel, which I wish it did. Um, being that it only supports three radios, I would think that the developer would have put a little effort into doing that. That being said, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this interface. The interface is, is, is pretty. There's nothing wrong with it. It's good. Um, so we can, we can control all the functionality of the radio and some of this is radio dependent. The 7610, as it has two transceivers in it, I have double transceivers up here. Um, the 7610, if I click on the antenna button, oops, not the transmit button, the antenna button, you can see I have multiple antenna choices because there are multiple antenna choices on the 7610. You wouldn't have some of this functionality on the 705 or the 9700. And I don't know all the options on either one of those two radios as I don't have one of them. Of course, you can adjust all your controls, gain control, notch filters. All the filtering can be changed. I can make adjustments to noise reduction, um, noise blanking, filters. If I want to, If I want to adjust a filter, I can come up here and click it. I can move all this and change the pass bands just like you do it with the knobs on the radio. So that's, that's excellent that it has all these controls. Um, of course, I can generate a tune of the radio from here, and that will kick on the whatever tuner setup you have. And we can adjust our microphone level, our compression, uh, what microphone setup we're using on the uh, radio with the... Uh, software. When I plug this in, I did not have to really change any of this. The software figured out the correct settings with the radio on its own. I did have to point it at the radio's network address, but that was, that was the only thing I really had to do. So all of that, the tools, I'm not going to go through all these. There's PSK, there's RIDI. Those are kind of obvious what those are. HF fax, I've never messed with, so I don't know what exactly that is. It has a decent logbook in it. The logbook functionality here, um, we have the ability to export and import ADIF files, which is what WSJTX makes, for example, so I can send these to somewhere else if I needed to. Um, FT8 off night with, with TO, for example, I can upload these to, to uh, Dan's server, KD2 FMW server, straight out of here. I could do it that way. My QSLs, this will let me log to these guys, QRZ, Club Log, EQSL, Cloud Log. Um, 
I don't have that set up. I never heard of that one. And I can uh, just save it and, and print it out to a paper log if I wanted to. I log to QRZ. Um, so this works out perfectly for me. My QRZ account logs to Logbook of the World. So this one thing sends my logs to the two places that I log stuff at. That's excellent. Um, you can set alerts and filters on any of this stuff. I can uh, go through and, and root through my log and find how many times I've talked to uh, to temporarily offline KM9G, for example, or find out how many times I talked to Beer Snack. Um, I have not talked to the smoking ape because no one knows his call sign. It's secret. If he even has one, does he really? Who knows? Um, so anyway, that's the, the log settings. There's some other settings for the log. So that's pretty straightforward. The other tools up here, um, I have a PSK reporter map. I can look at this, and this will pull me a list. And there it is. And I can also click the map button and get this really cool globe view of all the PSK reporter 40 meter for my call sign in the last 24 hours on FT8. So pretty neat. It has DX cluster which also has map capability, just like, um, just like uh, the PSK reporter. And that takes a while to uh, populate sometimes. Eventually it will. I'm just going to move him out of the way for now. I think I have that set up. <clears throat> the band plan, this is cool. There's the band plan. Um, this looks like pretty much the U.S. band plan. Since the app knows I'm in the United States, I assume if I told it I was in Germany or England or, you know, the EU, I would have a different band plan show up. So if we look at 20 meters, oh, let's see. Yeah. This is the entire band plan. So this is saying phone 20 meters, 14.15 to 14.35. So yeah, that's, uh, that's correct. So that's pretty neat. And then you can look for satellite, some satellite band plan, uh, which I have never fooled with. So I couldn't really talk to that. Um, call lookups, obviously network statistics. This is an interesting thing. So, this application, unlike a lot of other rig controls, does not use USB at all. No USB cable required, no USB cable used. This only connects over a network connection. In the case of the 7610 and the 9700, that's a hardwired Ethernet connection. In the case of the 705, that is Wi-Fi. I don't know if the 705 has a wired connection. That seems kind of silly for that, but in any case, I know it has Wi-Fi. The developer, Marcus Roskosh, um, his reasoning for that is that he can't do this wonderful waterfall and some other features fast enough programmatically relying on USB speed. He needs the higher speeds of the network connection. Um, that's what I read on his website. I will put a link to the developer's website um, in the thingamabob down below so you guys can find it. It is available on the App Store for iOS and the App Store for Mac. Um, oh, I guess I thought I had that off. So anyway, there's all of our settings for everything. Preamps, attenuation, whatever. Um, the tools. Um, a, couple, a couple other things here. Uh, keyboard, I can set hotkeys on the keyboard to jump to do different functions. A MIDI controller runs about $100 to $150 for a, a low-end one. And that lets you assign, it, it's similar to a Stream Deck. It lets you assign functions to specific keys or knobs on the MIDI controller. Um, if you don't know what one is, just Google it. Amazon sells probably 100 of them, and Sweetwater or any of the music websites sell probably 500 of them. Um, an RC28 controller, I believe, is an Icom doodad that plugs in to let you control volume and change channels or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't have one. So 
um, this is all the specific functionality. And, and the one thing that I, I think that um, is a little bothersome about the interface is that all of the settings are not in one place. They're kind of specific to what function you're doing. So if you're in uh, FT8, there's FT8 settings. If you're in PSK, there are PSK settings. If you're in your logbook area, there are logbook specific settings. Good thing, bad thing, I don't know. I'd kind of like one grand unified place to set all that stuff. That's not how the developer did it. Doesn't hurt my feelings. It still works. Just that's what it is. Um, for example, if you go to the IC7610 settings, there they are. Um, so, you know, it, that's that's the only real thing. This application will act as a cat server. So if you have some other application that you want to do cat control to your radio with that you just love, theoretically, and I have not tested this, I should be able to use WSJTX and point WSJTX at this app here. And WSJTX should be able to run using this app as a cat server. Now, that's kind of weird. But if you're in love with WSJTX, you know, that also means theoretically you should be able to use w or, uh, JS8 call or ALE software or um, the email thing, WinLink, using SDR control as your cat server or cat control for the radio. Again, without a USB cable. So that's pretty cool. Um, that covers basically most of the stuff this does. The uh, I have the iPad version. It was $44 on the um, iPad, iOS App Store. And the PC, not the PC, the Macintosh version is 100 on the Mac App Store. Is it expensive? Mm hmm. I don't know. It does a lot of functionality in one program, so that's pretty neat. Um, the way the licensing works on the iOS and Mac app stores, I've paid for one copy of this software, and if I had 20 iPads, I could load it on all 20 of my iPads without paying extra. I have paid for one copy of this software on my Mac here at my house, but I use a Mac at work. I also have a MacBook. So I could put it on those computers. So I have access to my radio from wherever I am. I've used the application locally here on my local network at home. Works beautifully. And I used it on my MacBook Pro over the internet from my office yesterday and FT8ed over the Wi-Fi at my office through the internet here to talk to this 7610 here. And it worked beautifully, which is very similar, I believe, to what a Flex Radio does. So that's awesome capability. Is the app perfect? I don't think it's perfect. I think it's pretty swank though. And I think it's well worth the $144 I spent for both of the apps, the iPad app and the Macintosh. So that's going to be about it for this video. Guys, if you have any questions about the application, if you're thinking about buying this, feel free to, to drop a comment or shoot me an email, or find me on Toad's Discord. I'm there all the time. Um, I'm usually on Ham Radio Nuggets with Temporarily Offline on Monday nights. So feel free to, to jump out and uh, and holler if you got a question. I'll be glad to answer it. Fellas, if you would, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe dealio down there in the bottom. Make sure you have rung that bell so you get notified whenever I post any videos. And if you got something out of this, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. And it helps YouTube find good content for you the next time you're on YouTube. Guys, 73, have a good day.